Welcome to the home of good news. I am Pule Mulebatsi with you today on Stories Untold. We take the next half an hour to introduce you to yet another great initiative. Today, we are getting to know the Rata Foundation. Now they've got offices across South Africa and the main focus is on child care and child protection. Rata Social Services is a child protection non-profit organization that has been around since 1948. The welfare organization has dedicated themselves to enhancing the quality of life of all people in South Africa. Rata has offices in four provinces and we spent some time with the chairperson of the organization and some of the staff and partners in the Ekurlini offices. We are currently working in four provinces in Gauteng, Limpopo, Mpumalanga and Northwest. We have 14 offices or centres and we are um, helping people from 14 centres or offices where we have permanent social workers and auxiliary workers um, where people can um, just come into our offices and ask for help or we also get um, a lot of um, of, of intakes from people that are referred to us either via telephone for someone that's, that sees a problem with a child being abused or neglected. We get intakes from schools, from any um, social um, organization or, or, or anything like that. And um, then we also help those. So it's people coming in um, by themselves or referrals that we need to go out and help people. In 2015, we also decided it's time to change our name. And we changed our name to, to, to Rata Social Services. And Rata is uh, the Sepedi word for love, and it's a verb. Because we say love is not just an emotion. It's not something that you just feel, it's something that you do. And that's what, that, that's what we try to do at Rata, is we try to spread love, especially those who are falling through the cracks in society meaning our vulnerable children. Our focus is to safeguard them against the uh, abuse, against the neglect. So we're having different kind of uh, programs like an early intervention program, we've got prevention program. Early intervention is, say for instance, uh, we have found a child in a family where the child had been neglected. When we talk about neglect, we talk about various forms of neglect. A lot of times the children, the parents don't send the children to school, uh, they don't take them for medical care, they don't feed them properly uh, and then what we do is that instead of immediately removing that child from that particular family, we rather use the court system in order to safeguard the children. So what we do is we go to court, we write a report, we be saying this, is, this child is at high risk, but we don't want to remove this child from this family. We're rather wanting to support the family within their context where we will then send the social workers to really work out a program to say, okay, fine, we see that you don't have food, so how are we going to feed you? If we see the child is not going to school, what do you need to help the child to go back to school? So if the, the parents are not having funds, then obviously we need to help them to see if we can't go and apply for a support care grant from the government. With regards to uh, prevention services, we're obviously having a lot of awareness programs arranged for workshops where we inform uh, parents with regards to how do you treat a child. You know, because a lot of times um, people put a lot of emphasis on the child's rights. However, what we normally do is we balance the child's rights with responsibilities and we also teach the parents as to how do you apply that. How do you teach your child within this particular context as to how do they need to look after it? Because if we don't sort of um, assist parents to understand what is the, the impact of abuse, then they might you know, hurt the child to such an extent where you can't turn around and you don't want to really break up families. So that is why we use the preventative measure in order to teach parents, teach children, teach the youth as to what and how and what will be the impact of abuse and what do you do in order to prevent the abuse from happening. So I've been working with the community for the past seven years. Um, if I can tell you about Brakpan, Brakpan is a community of 
and it's poor community. It's, um, there's a lot of homelessness. There are people in Pragpan, they are living in com commune houses where the owners, they divide their houses to make rooms. So what is the worst with it is that the people in Pragpan, they, most of them, are, as I mentioned, they are unemployed. Some of them, they are using substance. Uh, so we have to remove children in some of them. Others, they are able to care for their children. Problem is they, they will struggle with food. Even in the houses, they, we, so they take the money for grant that they are getting as child support grant. Because most of the people in Pragpan, they are not from Pragpan. So they are using the, the money for child support grant to pay the rent. So after that, they are unable to buy food for their own children. So that is what one of the things, since our organization is a child protection organization, so we render services, um, foster care, we do reunifications, uh, preventative services. So as we were working with them, the organization uh, realized that uh, there is a need in terms of food, as we are having a soup kitchen in the, in the, for, for homelessness. It started as a, 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 for homelessness, but as we are working with these communities, we've realized that it's not only the people that are homeless that are struggling with food, also the people in the houses, as I mentioned, they are using the, the social grant. When we go out for our home visit, if ever the matters are reported, matters that are reported mostly is the, the there's no food in houses. Is there is substance. So we were removing a lot of children. While we are removing, what we have realized also at the same time, we also have to do reunification services of which once we remove the children, we have to work with parents for them to be able to improve their lifestyle so that the children can be placed back with their families. So reunification services are so difficult to, to do due to that of now. They are poor. The parents are unable to care for these children. Welcome back to Stories Untold. Today we are getting to know the work that the Rata Foundation does with children in different communities. In this particular segment, we are looking at the work that they do with early child learning centers to educate children about the importance of safety, but also arming them with tools and words to use if they found them in positions where they feel unsafe. RADA has been changing people's lives by using different social work tools and partnering with local schools to implement programs set to give children skills to protect themselves. Happy Hearts Academy is one of the schools working with the organization since 2022. So because we're working on the developmental milestones of the babies, um, at the Junior Academy it, teached you, it, it actually teaches you more to work with babies from baby three months up until the age of four years so you can actually build a milestone before they reach more obstacles coming to grade R and going up to intermediate and foundation phase at schools. So um, the programs that we run with both schools is actually we broke up like spe special themes so that we can actually teach the kids of the importance of who they are, how to accept themselves. And one of the special themes that we normally focus on, basically there's four. So it's child abuse, sexual abuse, um, animal abuse, because people can be very cruel when it comes to animals at times. But we teach them the importance of treating animals as good as we possibly can as well. And then the last one that we're also working on is anti-bullying. Simply because we know these kids need to be ready moving from where they are at the foundation level into the intermediate phases and then they'll have to be there being themselves, accepting the, accepting the fact that they are all different from each other. So yeah, those are the programs that we're running with as a school and then we actually got RATA as well involved in the program so that we can 
hold hands because we know they might go through things with kids that we do not understand but holding hands while struggling at the same time actually helps us to boost the kids in where we want them to be coming to the future. The reason why I reached out to Rata was the fact that we felt simply because they're working with the kids, let's say at the domestic level, of which we do not have access to. So they would actually come with um, guidelines as to this is how we do things, let's get these things um, working out for the kids on this level, at this level, this is how we do certain things and this is how we get a message across when it comes to the babies from this ages up to the ages of six years. So the reason why we felt like, okay, let's hold hands with Rata is because we felt they're very passionate at what they're doing and another thing is they love working with people and that's what we love doing, working with people for the betterment of our babies. The way that we actually involve Rata is on both levels basically where Rata would, we would call if there's any domestic situations that we feel like they need um, to give the, um, deliver some services for the, for the babies and then there on they take it but we all the hands most of the time because remember these things goes from one stage to another stage so during the process we've always been in contact with them in ways where we felt like there's needed for um, Rata to intervene should we not be able because they are the source and they are the service for our area so if they can actually assist by that that's what they used to do so even now up until today that's what they are doing that's how we are holding hands joining in with Rata. With the schools we go to surrounding schools, um, mostly the ECDs, uh, early childhood um, developmental centers, or the um, primary schools. We go to schools and then we talk about um, child protective child protective behaviors um, which involve child abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and all the other types of abuse, bullying, and which is also part of um, the programs. Do not identify themselves as girls, and there are those who do not identify themselves as boys. So then we, we also have non-binary rights. If that particular week they are having a theme of child sexual abuse, then we will be talking about child sexual abuse. How does that, in, in, um, what is it that entails will be us going in, basically I'm going in, having a program where I'm talking to the children, where I'm asking them if they know their private parts, if, I'm, if they know that they've got different private parts and what are their private parts called and all of those things. So that is basically what I do and then who is allowed to touch them if they feel unsafe, if they've been touched, who can they contact? Those are the programs that we run. And then with the older school, with the older guys, your grade sixes and sevens, we talk about school related uh, gender based violence. Um, say for example, if the teachers are at school, at, for example we've just had um, a program where teachers are saying please come to our school and speak to uh, speak about gender-based violence we've got uh, boys who are beating girls so we're having a problem with that we need our kids to learn that this is not the way so we would go in we would speak about child um, uh, speak about uh, gender-based violence we speak about how it is that you can protect yourself and what it is that in, in is in within the spectrum of gender-based violence the bullying the the cohesion the everything that is involved like other non-profit organizations struggling financially, RADA relies on government subsidies and donations from South Africans. Our main source of income is um, government subsidies. So um, we are subsidized for our specific programs that we do, um, for the statutory work that we do. Our second source of finance is from the church. So our biggest single donor um, the church and then we are um, we are always looking for ways to raise some money we um, have projects like a golf day um, and so on looking for individual donors but also through our partners um, that um, we are part of um, from the church's side we are um, doing also social entrepreneurship 
where we are um, trying to establish a um, profit company um, to do business, especially um, get money, but not um, give, giving the profits to people, but um, or, or giving the profits to individuals and make them rich. We are taking the profits and we are um, putting it back into our uh, social work. So we are still in our um, infant shoes on that. Um, we are busy um, buying property where we can get finance and with the aim to rent out the property and then get income from that. But it's a long-term process. But yeah, we are hoping to raise some money with that in the long term. Welcome back. The Rata Foundation is centered in different provinces within South Africa and they do so much with children. Now at this particular moment we're having a look at some of the intervention measures that they have with children that are found in homes that are not uh, suitable for their welfare. Now what do they do? How do they ensure that a child is safe and their life continues as per usual? Rade says they have a lot of children waiting to be adopted and are currently working with foster parents that are trained and upskilled to look after the vulnerable children. I've got three foster parents children under my care for already for six years and they are very lovely children. I take them to school in the morning, I pick them up. I actually, I stay at home, I actually at home, I work from home on cars uh, and I pick them up in the morning, take them to school, I bring them back to people from the school. Uh, in the afternoon, I pick them up from the school, I bring them home, I do the homework, and that's it. I have wonderful kids. I've been a foster mom for two years, simply love it. I was struggling for having children of my own. So I came to a social worker who said to me, listen here, yeah, I've got four kids for you, so that's from another social company. But then Rata approached me and said to me, um, are you willing to be a foster mother to a, a boy that's a little bit backwards and he's not having a lot of luck where he is? I said, um, you're more than welcome. She inspected my house. Then, yeah, we're talking about Rata. So they inspected my house. They said, you're good, whatever. So we went to court. I had my boy. We love children. So I'm a mother of currently have five foster children awaiting number seven. So yes, I simply just love my children. All of them. And Rata is the best, um, considering all the other social worker companies I've been working with this uh, last three years. God is good to me. I've got a little, my little one. She's uh, four years old, one of the best in the West. She loves uh, people. She loves uh, um, to be happy. She's a really happy, happy girl. And yeah, Rata is good to us, all of us. And we can only say we need more people that got experience like the people in Rata that really care for the community. And um, yeah, I always want to say, you know what, without God you can't do these things. The organization has challenges ranging from lack of transportation and people turning a blind eye to those being abused. Challenges are on numerous levels. I think the, the biggest challenge is um, the social climate in South Africa where there's still too many people who don't um, say anything when they see someone that is being abused. People are scared of getting involved. So they see a child or a woman or an elderly person being abused and they are scared to get involved. And, and it makes it difficult to, to, to help people because they have to be part of the process of being helped. Challenges regarding finances, it's a big challenge, um, but it's um, part of what we have to deal with. We can um, try and get as much money as possible to help as many people as we can, and we won't stop doing that. So even though finances is a challenge, we don't see it as something that will stop us. We will continue to work on that. Other challenges are um, the interference um, from politics, um, especially in Gauteng at the, in, in the last year or two, where I think um, politics became um, interfere, or where, where politics started interfering with the delivery of services. 
And um, politics do, don't have a place in helping people um, who are suffering the most vulnerable because um, when we get to, the, to these people, all we need is to help them. They don't, they, they don't need to be any other sideshow or any other ideology. It simply need to be here is people who are suffering, who are vulnerable. Often these um, children are broken children and we need to help them to become whole again. And, and you don't want interference, you simply want to be able to help them. Because we're working with the, with the community and we work most, most of the times so we work in informal settlements, uh, the things that we really need uh, for this uh, uh, office or for Rata social services is cars. Um, we really need cars because we need to respond fast and that is always a, a big hampering um, uh, when we need to go and investigate. You need to be able to move fast and when you don't have the right equipment like a car then it hampers your, your, your interventions. And then I think for me the, the second aspect that I really would like to uh, ask the public to come and help us with is to come and volunteer. We've got a lot of children who needs to learn to read. We need a lot of children who needs just support, just somebody that they can come and talk to, you know. So we want to recruit them to become mentors for our children, especially our teens who needs a, a father figure or a mother figure that you can just sit and you can phone and say, you know, what do I do? Uh, volunteers are always a very, very um, helpful um, to come and assist our social workers. Social workers, uh, at the moment here, we've got one of my social workers having up to nearly 200 cases on her caseload, and she's only one person. Um, and think about it, if you need to go and remove a child, it takes you a full day to do that. So what happened to the 199 cases? And then it adds on all the time. You know, sometimes you need to do, I forgot to say that, we, we're also doing uh, mediations where we help uh, couples to mediate uh, parental plans, uh, to help them to overcome their obstacles and we take the, the parental plan to court where it becomes a court order where they can then live parallel uh, with one another in order to, uh, to, to safeguard their children. Um, and I think uh, another uh, aspect that I would like to plea is that when we advertise our workshops, take note, come and join us in our workshops because a lot of times we, we train on different uh, topics which sort of really wants to safeguard the, the family. The organization believes in the potential of every individual becoming the best that they can be with what they have. And Gerard says if we work together as a country, we can achieve more. When I look at, um, at, at, at South Africa and we um, have these amazing events like the Rugby World Cup and Rugby Tests and I look at them in the crowds and I see all the people singing the anthem together. And I say, these are the people who, is there, who are there to make South Africa better and to be there for those who need help. And together we can really make a difference. And, and that's why I'm proud to be doing what we are doing, is I think we can make a huge difference in South Africa. We, are, we have amazing people. Unfortunately, in every amazing country and in all amazing peoples, there are always some who fall through the cracks and somebody need to be there to pull them up and give them a new chance on life and, and that's what we're trying to do. Another great addition is coming to an end but we do this every single week right here on SABC News. Continue sending us those messages and continue supporting the movement because indeed we are all the change that we want to see in our societies. From myself, Pule Mulebazi and the team that makes it all possible, it's a goodbye for now.